Crystal here. And Mama. Welcome to our podcast. An all new anime podcast for covering one of the most popular shows among anime watchers. Or on on High, High School Host, Host Club. Club. This hilarious series follows Haruhi Fujioka, yeah. who ends up working at Oran Academy's Host Club after accidentally breaking a prize vase and must pay the Space. debt. <laughs> There's only one little hiccup. Haruhi's a girl! <laughs> <laughs> Never thought we were watching this show because we actually tried it some time ago and like the first episode and we backed out. Not realizing that it was uh, an entire play on Otaku. It was a satirizing it. Right. Right. <laughs> well, that's what it means. <laughs> So, yeah, when we saw the first episode, we were like, no, and then went to something else. And then uh, when Mama found out that uh, Edward was the voice of one of the characters, <laughs> she said, we gotta watch this show! <laughs> Even if we had stick with it, we gotta watch the hero! And then I also read that it was a, a play on it, mm. a satirization. Mm. So it's like, yeah, it's pretty much yeah, play on it. And yeah. then it was like, okay, then... Oh, we didn't get that. No. And after that was understood and we watched the entire first episode, it was like, oh, we get it. This is hilarious. Right? <laughs> we got the the whole joke because right. you can see a lot of the uh, hits at the type of people that like the things that they're parroting within Otaku. the show. Yeah. You know, talking about like the things they're parroting within the show, mm -hmm. and they play it so well. And you have to remember, it's all Moses is pretty much an, an act for the girls that come there because right. I mean, it's off, and then they're all different people. And, <laughs> and they pay money, and Kiyoya makes sure they do. And uh, it's just hilarious. It's hilarious. It's witty. It's smart. It's fun. It's got a great cast of voice actors. It is one of the most perfect shows I have ever seen in my life. I could sit and watch this entire series over and over and over. And yes, it's this high school host club. But no, anyone, any age can watch it. And clearly this was not meant for anyone that is very young. <laughs> <laughs> and only wish that it was more than 26 episodes. Because yes, yes. we heard because it's been... In high demand, like almost as much as Tiger and Bunny to come back. The only difference is this came out in 2006. I think. It's and been a while. In 2019, it is still one of the top anime shows as well as one of the top man manga sellers uh, of all time. And they s still have panels and they appear at anime cons mm -hmm. and comic cons and cosplay is done by them not only by commoners but <laughs> also stars right. so it's just that has been influential and that enjoyable and that powerful um made a, that powerful impression on the anime world mm -hmm. so and what's weird is that we found out that back in 2017, they actually has re supposedly renewed it. We thought it was a joke. It was a no. It was supposed to come back mm -hmm. in 2017 with a new season. But for some reason, Funimation never went through with it. And the, ne the second season never came up. And nobody really knows why they changed their minds when it's still a high-demand show mm -hmm. like Full Metal Alchemist and a bunch of their other programs. Right. So, this is a show that's full of fun. So, we'll go a little bit more into it because we keep saying it's fun. And you're probably mm -hmm. going, what the heck is fun about it? Tell mm -hmm. me, tell me, please. Okay. So, there are six students, including Haruhi, mm -hmm. um, that attend this academy. And as we mentioned, she gets into it as a result of her own misfortune. Mm -hmm. But it's composed of uh, teenage boys... Tamaki Suo, mm -hmm. Kiyoyo Tori. Mm -hmm. uh, you have um, one they call, they call Honey, but I Honey think his Senpai. name is, yeah, I think his name is Miyazuki, I Honey think. Sen Honey Mizuki. Right. And then you have his cousin, Mori. Was Mori. And you have Sinosuke. Yeah. And then you have the twins, the Hahachi twins. Hi, 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 hi. Hitachi mm -hmm. twins. It was. Hikaru and Karu, uh, yeah. Yes, and then there comes Haruhi after she breaks the vase, mm -hmm. and in the the most hilarious part in the first episode, and it, it is it's too old to be spoilers. So 
She's <laughs> really a long-haired, gorgeous girl, but the night before she's supposed to go to school, some kid sticks gun, gum in her hair, so she cuts all her hair off. And then she comes there kind of dressed like a tomboy and not knowing, you know, what, is coming waits her and so <laughs> she actually breaks the vase they said well you're gonna have to work it off you can just be a host never telling them that she's a girl right and so she's real thin and lift and she's not <laughs> curvy or anything so she gets away with the androgynous look and it, it, in the beginning tamaki is falling for her but doesn't realize he's falling for her and doesn't realize he's falling for him because Tamaki is a little dense, lovable but dense. <laughs> and one by one you see these characters realize she's a girl, different things happen. The Someone light bulb literally goes right. off, yeah. Someone picks her up and the last one to figure it out as always is Tamaki that she's a girl. And so they decide they'll just keep it a secret and she'll continue paying off her debt working for Oran Host Club. And then the hijinks and hilarious situations okay. ensue every single episode. Right. And it's it, just fantastic. <laughs> it's so creative. I think that's what is so amazing about it. There's nothing on earth like Oran right. High School Never Host heard Club. of a concept like nothing this. Nothing like it. Not in here or in other countries or in a store. Nothing. Mm -hmm. And someone even tried to make a host club for real and they were <laughs> and then the school rejected the idea. Well, remember I told you I said if they're an adult so, host club, <laughs> so I would go at least one time because that would have to be this fun, <laughs> absolute fun. I would do it at least one time. <laughs> yeah, someone tried and they said, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> but, yeah, the show is just absolutely a blast to watch. And there's no, there really isn't like some hard pressing plot like a lot of the other anime is really just kind of slice of life the only thing that was kind of sort of a plot was when is she going to pay off the debt because the first few episodes kind of keep track of like oh you keep this if you're doing well so far you keep this up you'll pay off your debt soon or something will happen she has to pay for it and they'll keep tacking on to the debt so it <laughs> takes longer or it takes this many customers to do it but by the time you get to the end you kind of forget that she even well, owes before them you get to the end halfway yeah. through you forget yeah and they so stop, does she they stop and so do they yeah they stop bringing it and up so Keo, yeah. <laughs> they stop bringing it up you stop thinking about it by the end it's like she, she doesn't want to leave by the time this is over, she only not want to leave. <laughs> right. And who can blame her? It's just so much fun every single episode. Another thing that really stands out about this anime is that every single character on here is unique and different. There's not any character that's similar to another one where you see a duplicate or someone just seems to be just named different, but it's the same character. Each one has distinct personalities they look different mm -hmm. I, I mean they're just like you would meet people in regular life who were who are individuals and that's very difficult to do in any show the only other show i seem that comes close to this that does it excellently as well is uh, my hero academia where mm -hmm. the cast is just vast mm -hmm. and different the characters move differently. They have their own styles. Mm -hmm. And I love those type of shows, whether it be anime or any type of other animation, mm -hmm. when you have characters that are distinct in that show and they're like individual people in real life. That's really just genius and brilliant work. Mm -hmm. Yes, I think this show is genius and fun. So <laughs> let's talk a little about the, the voice actors. And some of your favorites are probably in here. My favorite character is Tamaki Solo, of course, of course <laughs> and he's voiced by Vic Minjona. Of course, and, you know Edward Elric. Yes, and uh, he is fantastic. He does a higher voice, and all throughout this show, at times, they do homages to Edward. You'll see uh, yeah. a ball with the hair right, on it. Right, the little angry faces. Or you'll see him do a flying kick across the room. Or he'll start yelling and he's got that Edward face with the teeth and things. Right. And it's so hilarious that they, they keep paying homage to him. The character is wonderful because he's got this backstory that's that's sad, but also ends up turning out to be a blessing for him in disguise. He wants a family, and with the host club, he gets a family. And most people assume he's going to be arrogant and snobbish and so forth. And or he's he just, diabolical right, or something. And he's just one of the sweetest people you'd ever meet in this anime. And he cares about 
other people helping other people and making them happy mm -hmm. and it's almost like it's his it's his Achilles heel and it's also his joy. He gets a joy from it. So mm -hmm. it's the thing and, that he likes the most. Right. And, and it keeps and it keeps showing within the uh, anime. They even have a couple serious episodes when they get to uh, Baxter, like how the club formed or how each character ended up joining, which we'll get to in a minute. But continue with the the voices. Okay. And the next character is voiced by J. Michael Tatum, who you also know as Tanya, Tanya Ida. or Scar if you watched the Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, right. and he voices Kyoya Utori. And I have to say that this Tatum voice is my favorite. I don't know why. I absolutely love him voicing Kioya. He's This is my favorite so far of him voicing. So since Tatum is your favorite on My Hero Academia, you go ahead. Yes. Well, in here, um, I did recognize him only a little bit because we heard him do a similar voice like this on a Black Butler and some other show. He sounds vastly different from each character he does. So for here, what's really funny about him here is that all the humor comes from the dialogue. Mm -hmm. There's no uh, loud explosions of, do this, do that, do this, do that, don't do that. Craziness or edginess is in there. It's just the dialogue he's given and the delivery is was hilarious for the character and the response he'll have to the people when he says something. They say something stupid. He has someone back and retorts like, "Did you really just say that?" And he's, he's always writing in his book. You never know what he's writing. He's he's, he's very dry, and he's one of three sons um, of the Atori family, and he's the one who has the least likely chance of taking over the family business. Mm -hmm. He seems, very, well, he is very serious, but you can see there's a kind side to him. His best friend ends up being Tamaki Suo, and they're like total polar opposites. Mm -hmm. And I watched a panel where um, Caitlin Glass, and I'll just say Caitlin and Vic and Tatum all talked about these characters. And this is one of Tatum's favorite characters. And he lets and he but he reveals so much about the character that unless you read the books you wouldn't know about. And this character is really just I would say probably the most complex character on the show, and is my favorite, my second favorite character. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I actually love this character, and I know that Rascal was probably thinking this was going to be my favorite. Because of his personality. Oh, well, yeah. But yeah. because it's not Vic, Vic right? is his favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and then Kyoto is second favorite. And then we have the twins, Hikaru and Karu Hitachian. And they are redheaded twins whom Tomki keeps describing as... As the, what did it say, the shady twins? Yes, the shady twins. And they are shady, oh their, my gosh. Their mother is a famous... Uh, haute couture fashion designer so they have great fashion sense but yeah they're mischievous they uh, get entertained by uh, fooling people and they love to confuse people as to which is whom is whom and they have a very interesting backstory as well they are uh, really a big part of the humor in this show absolutely and they adore um Haruhi as much as Tamaki, except for they're not in love with her. Although at one point you think that um, there's going to be some type Hikaru, of... Hikaru. Yeah. 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 It's crushing on her, but it's that they've never had other friends outside of each other. And when she's able to tell the difference between the two, it's like all of a sudden she becomes their toy. Right. But they're, they're fun characters. And uh, one is voiced by... Uh, I think one's Todd Habercorn. Yes, Todd Habercorn, who also does um, Ling, Ling on the Full Metal Alchemist. Yes, and a bunch of other voice acting roles. And usually, as soon as you hear him, you know. And then the second one is voiced by uh, Greg Ayers. Ayers. Yeah. yeah, Greg Ayers. Yeah, which they do sound alike, so at least it's like two people that really do sound the same. So but it's a different... Habakorn is very distinct because at times when he has that type of mischievous tone to his voice, it's obvious it's him instead of Greg. Mm. But these characters, you at first you kind of don't get them, but 
the more you watch, the more you end up loving these characters as well. It's hard not to love any of the characters that are part of this host club. Mm. But yes, you end up loving the twins as well. And then you have Miss Zucchini, Honey, uh, uh, who's hun called Honey Senpai. Uh, his last name is Harinuzuka. Haru and he is the smallest and looks like he's the youngest, but he's actually the oldest. He looks like a chibi character. He's absolutely adorable with this little cute voice. And, um, and he's, uh, he 17. kicks ass. And he's he, 17. And he's a martial artist master. All over the world, he's known for having, um, he's a specialist in several martial arts styles. And he's so great that once people know who he is, they get on the ground, they start bowing, and they're scared to death of him and don't want to fight him. <laughs> and he can take down whole groups of big grown men by himself. Right. <laughs> and they say, oh, you want some cake? At the same time. <laughs> and then you have... Um... And, uh, <laughs> He oh, he has this sweet, um, this sweet personality. He loves sweets. Mm. He's sweet and he loves sweets. And he has kind of a, he has several brothers, um, but he is the oldest. Mm. He doesn't look the oldest. He's also the oldest brother. And it's seen that because he does the host club and he loves sweets, that he's giving into his weakness. And although he's the strongest, um... It's not, look, he's not looked upon well because he's indulging. Tamaki got him to just be himself, which is wonderful, and he's happy. And he's just a joy in this show. He's an absolute joy. And um, he's voiced by. I think Lucy Afino. Christian. Yes. Who turns out to be Uraraka on My Hero Academia. Yes. I couldn't believe it. Like, what? All this time? I told you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and she had How we to. found out is we were looking at the credits one night. Oh, my hero academia, and we look at them millions of times, all of a sudden, I see her name, I go, oh my gosh, that's Honey Senpai! <laughs> no way! And then you have uh, Mori, what his name is Takashi... Uh, Mori Nozuka. Mori, okay, thank you. And he's voiced the by... Tall, he's the tall, strong, silent type. Right. And then he's voiced by Travis Billingham, or, you know, as Roy Mustang or Rock Bison. Yeah, Roy Mustang more. You hear Roy Mustang every time he opens his mouth. You hear Roy Mustang. And he's also Honey Senpai's cousin. Right. And he's pretty much quiet. He's in a way he's like firm where he has like one or two lines an episode. He's mostly there, but doesn't say much, but he does do some things. They even make a joke later on where they think he's upset. And it's like, Are you upset because you only get one line an episode? I know we're like three or is it because we're three fourths through the series and you haven't gotten your own episode yet? I'm sorry, we didn't write that. <laughs> so all together these these young men form the host club, and it's just wonderful how they have the characters interacting, how they blend and get along well, and the backstory of how this club actually came into being, how they come together is right. wonderful. And you've got some other characters. Some of them we're not going to mention the voice actors for various reasons, mm -hmm. but you've got Renge, which is the crazy... Um, she's like the Jessie of, of the host club. And she's a fangirl, and... Kiyoya looks like her favorite character on her favorite anime, and she's so blinded that she thinks for a while that he's that character, and he finally lets her know, no, I'm not. Right. And she comes, <laughs> and she no, decides not. she's going to be the manager, and she's, no one gonna, asks. and she's going to decide what different types of otaku get represented in addition to the ones they already represent. <laughs> and then you've got some characters. Oh, also you have the, um, the creepy... Uh, um, Nico Zawa, yeah. Because yeah. he has to be in the dark. Like, okay, I don't want to be seeing and you. And he's a Russian prince, but he can't stand the light. And his little sister can. And he's scared of the dark. Yeah, so. What the so heck is this? It's, that's a, it's a wonderful addition. And you've also got some characters that are one time appearances for different episodes that really make a memorable impression. We won't give any spoilers in case you haven't right. seen it. And, um,. They do have what's called the Zuka Club, which oh. is, is in a category of its own. It's pretty much, to, to summarize, they are the female version of the host club. And yes, they do the exact same thing as the host club, except, but, they, but they find them as enemies. Except for the host club is composed of um, straight men and one man who 
is gay, but it really isn't told. Right. But the Zuka Club is composed of entirely lesbians. Right. Yeah. And they basically do the same thing as the host club, and they put on performances and plays and stuff, and they have their big the fangirl and, base. And the leader, she keeps saying how she can't stand Tomaki because he's selfish and this, and he's this t- And she does exactly the same right. thing he does like, with what's girls. what's the difference? What's the difference? <laughs> Except when she does it with girls and right. they swoon and they fall out and everyone's in love with her and she's voiced by this woman that has this really deep, strong voice and her character is really, really tall and really, really has a presence. So, you know she's the leader. Right. You automatically know she's the leader as soon as she appears on the, on scene. But this is just a really right. fun, as yes. I said, smart, really br- witty, brilliantly written uh show that you really just can't get enough of watching. Right. I'm ready to and watch it all over again from beginning <laughs> to end. And we can't I can't wait for us to buy the actual book set. Right. To see the stuff so that they didn't get the put into thing. the show. Right. And definitely gotta mention two things. One would be like we said, there are episodes that show the backstory like of how like of how, you know, the host club formed and who these characters were before Tamaki showed up and he was always happy with them no matter what mm-hmm. and just wanted them to just be themselves. And they were even actually more serious. There was no music. There was still some playful things happening but in terms of dialogue, but they're really, but it was actually pretty serious, but it wasn't so much where it's like you don't like it. And with the characters, you can see this development pretty much every episode. Especially, I kind of love with uh, how he, well, this joke is every time she's Oh, we got to talk about her. Wait a minute. <laughs> let's talk about her. Uh-huh. Haruhi Fujioka is voiced by Caitlin Glass. Right. She's also Winry Rockbell. Right. And a host of other characters. And she's also the ADR director on the show. Mm-hmm. And she, her voice doesn't sound like Winry's. So it's different, yeah. right? So if you don't see her name, you really won't know that it's her. And she does a brilliant job at voicing Haruhi. You actually, you absolutely adore Haruhi, <laughs> and you like the interaction between her and the guys. And they actually grow to love her. And you know this by the end. No spoilers. And one of the best things about this show that we also failed to mention is that just about everyone from the cast of Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood appears in this show, either as a regular cast member or as a guest star, including the woman who voiced Granny. Right. <laughs> and that was, that was a brilliant, brilliant yes. movie. Yes, and, and her character did the same thing that Granny did in Full Metal Alchemist. She ended up dragging Tamaki... Like she dragged Ed. That was hilarious. All these shout outs. Right. This is brilliant. And last thing I want to mention is this was written by a woman, uh, Bisco Hattori. Uh huh. And she did a fantastic job. Right. And she even made her first uh, American appearance, I think, uh, last month, the first time to America because they invited her to one of the conventions. Right. What I want to mention, especially for Bennett and Looney Cat, is that. This is not a girl's show. This is an anime that was written for anyone. When you first see the animation, you may think so. But one of the best things about this series and how long it's been well-loved is that guys love this show. They Mm -hmm. absolutely love this show. And Vic was saying that sometimes when he's at conventions and they'll be a little embarrassed because they're not sure what their friends are going to think. So they'll have a Dragon Ball Z Broly something to sign. Mm-hmm. And underneath will be an Oran host code. Can you sign this please? And they secretly lift it so he can sign it. But guys really love this show. And anyone who watches it. Who has an open mind. Who doesn't think that anime should be a certain thing. Mm-hmm. Or that adults should be watching certain things. Or that teenagers should be watching certain things. And so forth. You watch this and take it in the fun that it's meant to be. You'll absolutely adore it. So take a chance. Watch an episode. And even just go on to YouTube and type it in. And you'll see all these guys. And I mean guys on full age age range. Anywhere from their teens to their 60s. Are cosplaying these characters and watching this show. Right. So, (laughs) I mean, how often do you see a show that has that kind of effect on this audience where the love keeps going long after the show has ended. Mm-hmm. 
The final two things I'm going to mention will be one that they also have live action adaptations. It was adapted into a J, no. hold on, a J drama that lasted for 10 to 11 episodes okay. and a live action movie takes place. Okay, it's the movie that I'm going... And the, <laughs> the, unfortunately, the people they chose kind of, really, they really don't look like they the characters. They full Metal Alchemist live action. Did yeah, they change we haven't the watched it. They changed that, we don't... Okay, no, you don't have to watch this. <laughs> no. You look at the poster, you look at the trailer, the characters are different, they don't look the same, they've changed the hair colors, the, the outfits aren't the same, it's just nothing like the uh, actual show that aired in America yeah. that we got to see, and you just can't understand why they would take so many liberties in changing it. Mm. I don't know if the creator gave the okay to do it, yeah. but it just seems like they wanted to make something different. In that case, they just should have made something different. Right. But no, we haven't seen uh, it. And I don't even look forward to probably ever seeing the live right. action. So. Right. so that's the final thing. One of my favorite things in the show is that you know this thing with Tamaki. He goes in the corner where he gets depressed <laughs> or insulted or something. And you do, for he and Harley, he's always polar opposites. But you can tell when he starts to rub off on her because... Whenever she's relaxing, she's on vacation, she's away from the host club, she's actually enjoying herself. The host club just shows up out of nowhere and they get worried, like, something's happening or she's been kidnapped. And they find her. And then she's immediately stressed out in like three seconds. And then she's, oh, and she's, and she's in the corner. There's even a few episodes where she was in the corner like him and just on her knees, like, why are they here? And the vacation's over. Okay, one more, one okay. more, one more thing. And it's really, really the last thing, guys. For some reason, Tamaki calls Kiyoya Mommy and himself Daddy. And you'll see in the show, and I say for some reason, because we don't want to spoil it, but it's hilarious. And some of the best lines come out of that interaction and his delusion that he is Haruhi's daddy. And you he tells him, I'm her father, my little girl. And everyone's like, and son. finally one character says, ah, uh, you seem a little young to be her father. Are you married to her mother? Oh, uh, no, I've never met her mother. And he's like, uh, then surely you can't be her father. And he has a nervous breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of my favorite lines ever from the show is between he and Kiyoya. And it, something happens, we won't say. He starts yelling, Mommy, Mommy. And Kiyoya goes, What is it, Daddy? <laughs> Let us know in the comments below how much you love it, whom your favorite character is. Do you really wish there were a season two or a reboot or anything? No, season two. Don't reboot it. <laughs> okay, a season two. You're and, screwing it up. Okay, a season two, not a reboot, sorry. Or they make another movie and make it more true to the series. Oh, that would be that fine. Would yeah. And if you haven't seen it, go to Netflix. Watch just the first episode. Just the first episode. You're going to be hooked. And you will want to binge watch it. And you will be thanking us in comments going, thank you, thank you, Rascal and Mama, because this show is really awesome and funny. And it's one of the few shows that I've ever watched where I get extreme joy watching it. In the entire time, you're happy. Mm -hmm. And again, that's something that really doesn't happen with a lot of shows. This show just it's seemed to have been created as a work of joy, a, wor a work of love mm -hmm. and joy. And it comes through in every episode, right. every character. And it's never insulting to what they're parroting. It's exactly. just having fun with it. Exactly. I can't wait to read, as I said, the manga series. So, yes, let us know what you think of the show in the comments below, please, if you've seen it. So, thank you so much for watching. I'm Rascal Entertainment. And I'm Mom Entertainment. Have a fantastic day. Peace. In the mountaintops, rivers, and streams. Fucking sunlight from the sky in my pocket. Give it to you later on in the form of a locket. People in the back, for the people in the front, for the people on the side, for the people.